Hello and good day day to Gavin and we have clan pestilence. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, yes, very guys. Very nice, very good, very tasty. And yeah. Another episode of episode one point five again. Kind of like the a new episode, but it's not really new because you possibly may have seen this. But I'm trying something different because in my original uh, Skaven, Skaven playthrough, I went and took the pastry city over here. But I was thinking, hmm, spending money to recruit uh, to build a city and to build up its ruin and also give up half of my units to replenish the city. That doesn't sound very scaven where well, I could easily just try and take the Skaven settlement from Kynashen. And with the army I've got, I'm not going to be able to take it. So hopefully, I'm taking this wrist. And that's to go into a um, ambush stance over here. They might see me and they might try and attack me with probably, what, like 12, 14 men. Like probably last time, but let's do it. Imperials. Imperial Peace AI setups. Okay. Um, can I scroll down? No, that's basically all on one thing. So, rumors have been heard that Kislev and the Empire and the Elector Council has made a secret arrangement to not attack each other, and both rumors true. Uh, choose the rumors are true to make all your Imperial faction, all Imperium factions in Kislev not attack each other. For the rest of the campaign, also all Imperium factions will declare war on everyone that sacks, raids, or occupies three or more settlements. Uh, the original says it can lead to, to different campaign experience. Choosing the rumors are not true will not change the diplomacy between these factions. Well, me being Skaven, I don't want them to join forces. I want them to be at each other's throats because I'm malicious little baby boy. So yeah, the rumors are false. They will go to war with each other and they will slaughter in my amusement. It looks like my ambush didn't work for now, so I'm going to retreat back again. I am the plague lord. Retreat back again, recruit some more men, go back up and ambush again. But they probably be in the AI, they're probably still going to sit there being like What does we do do? Get some clan rats in here then. Beast of End Rising, another set up video. <clears throat> the numbers of Bretonia have grown in uh, recent years. Deep in the forests of the old world and the hidden caves are uh, um, hmm, scheduled desert uh, rains. Uh, they are waiting for their time to come. Will the tribes leave their homes to plague and destroy the civilization of man, dwarves, and elves? Choose yes will enable the beast men invasions in the mid and uh, late game. Um, this will also make the game easier if you play as chaos or beast men. Hmm. <clears throat> well, this does sound like a lot of more of a chaotic mess of fun. So yeah, cause the beast men to go and go on a rampage. <clears throat> Hoping for them to leave their settlement. And hopefully try and take another set, uh, take another item, or I don't even mind if they see my ambush or try and come down and take my last, my only settlement. Okay, so let's have ourselves a little treasure hunt, shall we? Hmm, the tattered library at uh, Boyle Rin, in the midst of the ruined city of found a library. Although most of the building has been already been destroyed by fire, but there is a hidden chamber. Inside there is a pair of books written in an ancient language, <coughs> the uh, Nagash's books. Uh, um, let's see, be, be, beckoning your translator, you have um, hand him the tome for his consideration. Let's see, translate the first book, translate the second book, or sell the books. Hmm. Selling the books would give me a little bit of money, which means I would be able to rebuild the city. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Thousand gold. Following the hasty and not very uh, furry inspection, the local book dealer sees he is more than happy to take the volumes of your hands. Perhaps he is a little too happy. So yeah, I've got a little bit ripped off. Should have translated the books of the gash or whatever these books are. Two books, I don't know. Probably book one or book two in a gash or something, I don't know. Um, 
or like, maybe it, for some reason it's just book one of book two of the end times Warhammer rule book. So they, he's like, aha, now I can play some Warhammer. <laughs> or maybe it's, oh, that would be weirder. Like, in the Warhammer Fantasy universe, they play Warhammer 40,000. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. And in uh, the Warhammer 40,000 universe, they would play Warhammer Fantasy. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Or Age of Sigma. Cool. So yeah, that should give me enough money to take the settlement of Satuna. And yeah, popula population of two as well. So once I've taken it, I should be able to build its uh, province up as well. Sadly, don't have enough money to really um, have an army still. But yeah, to make up for that, I'm going to have Vermintide. Gain some Vermintide. And I've also noticed, um, yeah, Aura of Rot. So we no longer. So in the uh, Steel Faith Overhaul mod, you no longer need just the uh, Plague Furnace to get it, unless it is a better version. Like that would be something pretty cool. Spreading the rot of the Horned Rat, and it's uh, obviously added by Steel Faith Overhaul because it stays underneath it. So yeah, these guys are going to be pretty good. So yeah, but I mean, I'm not sure if the play verse might give you a better version of it, or maybe whatever that little emblem is down there for the, the play verse. It always has like an additional rock version. I'd have to see maybe like, later. I only be at level 13, mm. which when I ended all my other campaigns, I was normally about level eight. So yeah. not this episode, but the next episode maybe. I might as well just uh, maybe move up and take it of a. Um, Ambush. Yeah, it seems to have an 80% ambush chance, so that should be good. Next set over, I'll take that. Episode. And turn, and we'll take that settlement. And then get the pastries, which means a lot of food production. So, annoyingly, they are just hiding up in their stupid little skaven <laughs> hell hold, and it's not doing anything. It's being annoying. They're just standing there doing bugger all. Literally. I hate it when the AI does this, so they just turtle up and do nothing. And hello. Colonized here free. Don't mind if I do. And let's get ourselves my pastories. Oh, I need 800. <laughs> Literally here. To only 60 gold off. That's annoying. But yeah, that saves me some time. And then it means that I could then get to tier 2 for this one. So yeah. Gaining the, the, the amount of food I gain in this campaign start is a lot handier than it is. Next turn, I get some pastry, so I'll gain what plus twenty to my food. Oh, plus seven to my food. Oh, Nurgle will be blessed, I guess. But it annoys me that they just want to stay in their settlement and just be all turtle up and do absolutely bugger all nothing. It annoys me when the AI just does not want you to progress very fast. Even if they just see my ambush and see I attack me right now, I wouldn't mind because it's a, actually a fight. And with my uh, rot thing and also pestilent birth, just to really summon them like loads of rats should do a lot of work to them. And also assuming that they can do the same thing as well. My, my well, brothers. this is a bit interesting. See, I can, I'm sure I can remember in the previous games that you started at war with Clanation. And when I decided to attack that settlement, no wonder why they weren't trying to attack me. Because, um, well, they weren't at war with me. See, I thought you started at war with Clan Ashen, and then a little infection would then declare one you, but it doesn't matter. I'll go and take this settlement and win the fight. The only downside is there is a follow up army of almost a full stack of 20 and another stack of 13, so. Ugh, I might end up losing. Okay, so we have ourselves a little fighty doodle. This is going to be a bit of a funny, fun one. Release the poison wind, guard the ports of doom! Why? Because I say so! Ha ha ha, poison wind globideers are getting wrecked. You know what I say to those poison wind globideers as well? Uh, actually, you guys over here, you, you guys get fudged. Hello! Clan rats have said hi! We murder you, we stab you, stab you. Ah, oh, never mind, they seem to be winning combat. But if it draws more men away from the fight, I don't mind. 
And they seem to be just spawning all their units like miles away for some reason. Like, there's really no point. Let's move to the flanks. Wait, what? What's firing over there? Probably gut runners. I reckon they have snipe now or something. Oh, I just realized I actually have my little things to do, uh, abilities to cast. Let's get some rear charges then, now, shall we? And yeah, because the AI is not using their um, abilities very well, might as well just uh, go in. Speaking of abilities, uh, pestilent breath, my boy. Yeah, nice good old source and surround of death. We are just butchering them to whole high help. Oh, speaking of that though. Stop these guys in their tracks. Fire at William Wallace. Fire upon the enemy. Those guys are just somewhere to pointless. They aren't no point in living. They must die, die. Are these guys summoned? They aren't summoned. Chase, chase, murder. Uh, Pestilent Breath? Over there. Go! Rotty Rot! And a Pestilent Breath over here to stop these guys. Nice! Excellent work, guys. I mean, I lost a few guys. My Plague Monk surprisingly got a lot of damage. Oh, my Plague Monk's not Plague Monk. Oh well. Uh, it's alright, they're all gonna die anyway, so that's fine. But yes, a close victory. Hmm. With the whole fact that I'm lost plague monks, then I can understand why. But yeah, just I was thinking, mm, sacking it for a lot of money, but then that means more money buildings that have been lost. So there'll be no real point. I'll destroy you. Now I don't need you anymore. I might as well just build you. Well, building one of these would basically nullify the fact that I'm spending food on each of these settlements in here. Oh no, because. Later it becomes minus two. Okay. Okay, so each settlement gives you minus two because it says here free settlements upkeep. But then later in the building chain as well, you gain minus food production as well. Okay, that makes it interesting. And also for this, the debuff in here and the fact that it's only minus one public order. Hmm. A lot of minus public order I've noticed as well. Hmm. Huh. They ran away. That's quite handy. That means I can have a pretty big garrison over there. And they can't do damn monkey squat about it. <laughs> I would say that's a successful taking. And then more food production for me. <laughs> but I'm going to wait because I have this settlement to take. But first, might as well do another treasure hunt. Having this one guy going around taking these settlements out. Hmm. How much is this to build? 800. 400. Yeah, that should be enough. Now, this is a hard one. Because I get two points, I feel like I should just distribute this between, like, two perks. But there being so many perks, it's hard to decide. I'm thinking going down the battle ones and going down the uh, campaign ones would be better. Because I could buff my Skaven up, and then I could also buff like things through like recruitment and ambush chances and recruitments. So hang on, is that another one for oh, keep already? Wow. Oh, keep it to my lord's army, but it locks off the other one. Yeah, it does. It locks off corruption one. I mean, I already do. I think really good. Um, it's uh, and corruption in local provinces, so I could go for that one as well. So it's, it kind of makes no sense to actually to increase the scaven and corruption, and then also to create the untainted by free. Mm. But I mean, a lot. I think a lot of my abilities anyway increase the and corruption. Yeah, increase scaven and corruption by five in local province. So he would be a crazy big scaven and corruptor. Hmm. So, but I think adding so much scave and corruption to a settlement really early, it's, it might, might be very beneficial. But the upkeep would be also very helpful. Minus eight, that's going to be good. Yeah, screw it. Let's go full corruption. Why not? All the corruption in the world. 
Oh, when in enemy regions. Not bad, I should have read that. When in your own region, you minus one. But when in enemy regions, you plus one. That's 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 better actually. I didn't why I don't know why I didn't see that earlier actually. There's a treasure hunt, one more undead settles. Sentinels, we're close enough, whatever. Hmm. Clear uh, clearly a necromancer has been at work here. In the distance you see a small group of corpses crowded around an entrance to a ruined building. Hmm, what brings the undead here? What can they possibly be guarding? Hmm. Uh, back away, approach carefully, attack from range, or look elsewhere. Well, I don't really have any range in my army, but screw it, why not? Oh, minus money. Great. Lovely. Now I can't even take that settlement next turn. Rewind. I want to take that settlement, thank you. Okay, let's have one more. The Tomb of the Mummy. Hmm. Let's see, veteran. Venturing down into a dark, dairy lit catacomb. Beneath the ruined cities, you discover one alternate, uh, ordinate tomb. Noting that such place often contains the owner's treasures in life. You prize open this uh, door. Inside, it is hmm, somewhat oddly bare, except for the large uh, Ascrophagus. And the unidentified artifact, hmm, half buried in the dirt. Do I take the art? Uh, you know, take the artifact. Uh, that's obviously the scaven thing to do. The other, I mean, the sarcophagus could have somebody. I mean, I'd probably just be something stupid like you open the sarcophagus and there's a an ancient doom king in there and he goes and stabs you in the face. You're dead. The end. Yeah, take the artifact. Hell yeah, fencing blades. The most annoying item which was in Total War Warhammer. No, the most annoying weapon is just tabletop. Yeah, the fencing blades would be more beneficial for the uh, Plague Priest because Scrog's kind of got a uh, kind of tanky stats anyway. Next turn I can finally take that settlement, so we'd have four settlements in our grasp and it'd be not bad at all. And turn 13 again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call this video here, even though we have only awkwardly had one battle. Um, sadly, I don't think there'd be any opportunities to actually see um, anywhere which I could have a battle. Maybe from Exhortal. Um, not certain, though. i have to see if um, the lizard men go and fight back or something, or maybe destroy one of their settlements. That could be helpful. But oh, having them up there would be pretty handy, because maybe they might get in the way of the other... Lizard men. Uh, at the moment, I want to try and get into production on potentially getting the plague monks or the plague clog catapult. Because actually, I could do that. Because I could always, I could see. Was this only like two building construction slots or three? Only three. So that's annoying. So I have to pick between the. I'll probably go for the plague monks because even though the plague monks are more expensive they would be better at the infantry against the lizard men being unbreakable damage dealers and frenzy and anti-infantry and poison attacks yeah i could see the these guys working really well against the lizard men so yeah probably go for the pox cauldron perfect timing i can end this video and get some ice cream <laughs> uh see me i could probably do that it wouldn't surprise me. I'm like the weirdest like man child ever just to go and eat your ice cream immediately for stuff like this. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and see you guys in the next video. Mm, there might be a lack of battles in this, but there has been a lot of uh, successful and not so successful uh, treasure hunts to an extent. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. And remember, stay classy guys and have a good old day to you. Bye!